Fine, 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 fine. Where's one of what you buy in a rock store? You still see a big rock store before man? Where are all these fucking jars? You can't get no idea. You can't get no idea. Rock down and smash. Fine, 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 fine. You can't see me like that. Hi, this is Vidya here and I live in Guyana. I'm sorry that I could not be with you today in Jamaica at the conference. Thanks to Dr. Bulkan and the Europe Project for inviting me to participate in this way. I had a lot of fun in preparing this not very perfect video, um, which I think um, will, which I hope will add to your discussions. My own experience as an advocate started in 2001-2002 around the issues of sexual orientation as a fundamental right in Guyana's constitution. It was interesting that that um, law and the discussions around the law created some of the discussions in the society around LGBT equality. However, in the 10 years since, I have begun personally to question whether um, law and legal change and litigation are really the ways in which true equality could be achieved in the society. Because perhaps because I have a, such a cynicism of the failure in which um, the justice system has been to protect those who really need its protection. So in this discussion, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to try and bring some of the voices of my friends who do believe in the laws, and then I'm going to try and show, and, you know, show some of the examples of what I think are the kind of culture that we want. And I hope that in your discussion, in terms as we talk of strategy, and um, throughout the day, uh, in your own interactions, that you will also um, discuss some of these strategies. So first, about the laws. Ryan Rollins is a young man who goes about his business as a student at the University of Guyana and is subject to all sorts of discrimination. It was he who recorded uh, that uh, taunts at the beginning of this video. This is what he thinks about the laws and changing the laws. I feel the repeating of the laws will bring great justice and peace for the LGBT community since a certain section of the heterosexual community say we have no rights. This would allow um, us um, to feel emancipated. We wouldn't have the cause to second guess or be afraid of any outfit we want to wear. Antonio Paul has been living with his partner, Sean, for the last 13 years in a village in rural Guyana. He believes that his contributions to the community have helped his community to accept him. This is what he thinks about changing the laws. The laws is important to be changed, but it cannot change from the ground level. It has to change from where the laws are being made. I would recommend the changes, but as for me, I'm comfortable, but there are some people out there who would really need the laws to help to protect them, but as for me, I'm comfortable. So that is a litigant into cross-dressing case, and Gulliver also believes that the laws, uh, when changed, when I spoke to him, he says that he believes that the repeal of the laws will um, impact on how the community views him and also would allow him to find other work because Gulliver right now um, does sex work. And uh, Alessandra, who is a male to female transgender student, Alessandra also believes that these cross dressing laws will also improve the lives of persons who are transitioning from male to female or female to male. Alessandra also believes that there will be less discrimination when she comes to do an adoption because Alessandra hopes to adopt in future and she hopes to stay in Guyana. Now, when considering laws, I thought it was an I thought it would be interesting to look at how we view the issue of beating children and how we view LGBT equality in the Caribbean. Because I think children also are viewed as subhuman and there are many LGBT people I know who believe that corporal punishment is still necessary in our schools. So this next slide... In looking at the distribution of how um, countries deal with beating children and LGBT equality, we find that there are 10 countries which um, retain the colonial laws, but then there are 15 places where LGBT are accepted. In fact, two of those places have gay marriage, but yet still corporal punishment still happens in schools. In Belize, they have repealed corporal punishment, and in f um, five other countries, 
um, which are not in the English-speaking Caribbean, um, they have repealed all the sodomy laws, and also they don't have corporal punishment in schools. So this is interesting for us in the English-speaking Caribbean as we are active. Changes some straight political leadership in shifting on homophobia. And in this um, sort of next slide, I just kind of reflect on the kind of leadership that we should be promoting and celebrating, never mind the failings. Um, you know, we know we accept there are the failings, but this has been interesting over the last few years. Can't forget Bruce Golding's famous comments in 2008, not in his cabinet. But however, in our cabinet, we'll include Senor Fidel Castro from Cuba, who in 2010 um, accepted responsibility for all of the persecution that was committed. Then in November 2011, Mrs. Portia Simpson Miller made her uh, famous retraction of Bruce Golding's um, comments. Then in Guyana in 2012, Mr. Ralph Ramkran, the former Speaker of the National Assembly, spoke out against discrimination against LGBT people. And then Mr. David Granger, who is the leader of the opposition, said that in his party he will not discriminate. In May 2013, a lot of um, interesting leadership positions. Mrs. Kim Barrow, First Lady of Belize, she made an Idaho statement. And then um, last week we saw Dr. Lawrence Joseph, President of the Senate in Grenada, uh, making his statements against um, homophobia. And then um, a very, the leader of the opposition in Belize, the Honorable Francis Fonseca, saying that um, he has uh, homosexuals in his party and he accepts all um, uh, Belizeans, regardless of their um, sex. Where are we now? And um, there are two kinds of, there's a kind of middle ground um, where um, N Natasha Yap, who is an activist, Natasha said that there's a lot more work that has to be done to educate the public that a lot of people out there, the man on the street, does not understand the difference between gender, sex, and sex orientation, that believes that all trans are gay, and that all lesbians, to quote her, that all lesbians want to wear boxer shirts or want to be men. And also that, um, that, that, that there is a need to remember that in places like Guyana, um, Natasha uh, is pragmatic. Laws, even though they're implemented, are never enforced. So a lot of work has to still go on in terms of educating the public. This is Natasha believes in the importance of public education and um, working to change your minds. Ryan also has similar views in terms of what he sees as working. And some of the advocacy strategies that I see working are letter to the editor, one-on-one -on -one interaction with persons, elite interviews, social activities, where you invite members of the public to various activities to create awareness of the LGBT community. When people are informed on LGBT issues, they become allies. B is a young veteran teacher in rural Guyana who is out to his family and to close friends, and he's chosen to live in Guyana. And he said in a recent um, discussion, I don't look to laws or treaties or conventions for a fix. The solutions, as with most problems, is changing the education of regular people. He went on to say, once the population comes to the side of equality, then the laws will either be irrelevant or fall into righteousness. Acceptance by family is really critical. And um, Ryan's brother here talks a little bit about how he and Ryan interact. It was difficult at first because me and Ryan never used to get along, but I'm quite okay with it now because I see he's changed. He's changed a lot. He's not rude like before. Still rude, but not like before. Well, I don't know if any family member or if anybody in the community got a problem with it, but I don't have a problem with it. At the end of the day, my brother, do not, please, do not turn your back on them. They are very good people. They are the only day you're your family, your blood. Don't turn your back on them. At the beginning of May, I had an interesting interaction with a young Rasta man who had spent a lot of time on Facebook um, cussing me up and, you know, with all sorts of homophobic remarks and things like that. And in his interaction with me, he said, I did a lot of soul searching and I realized that there are good people and bad people in every race, religion, sexual preference, whatever. It would be hypocritical of me to dislike good people because of their sexuality. As a Rasta, I have to be careful what I say or do. I'm always under scrutiny. 
I realized one love is exactly that, no exception. So even in the Rasta faith, we then move on to looking at how, for example, in the Roman Catholic Church in the Caribbean, in Dominica, the, the, recently the Bishop of Rosso has said that um, the Catholic Church would not oppose decriminalization. But what do we expect from our faith-based leaders? I think um, it's important for them to stand by LGBT people. And Swami Aksharanand, who is the principal of the school in Guyana, and he has um, made a very interesting comment earlier this year in an interview on a television program called Plain Talk. Here's an example. My, my personal view is that people, um, we, uh, from a Hindu point of view and personally also, we really are not troubled by people's sexual orientations. It does not constitute an abomination for me. It does not constitute a violation of, as some people say, it, it is a violation of God. It, for us, it is not so. You can't violate God. You can't, you know. So for, for, from a Hindu per, per, um, primarily from a Hindu point of view, um, there is no, it is not an abomination for us. Um, we're not going to go and um, promote a particular lifestyle. But you wouldn't pronounce judgment? No, or or far from, uh, we, would not, we would not do that. And I would support an individual in his or her quest for her own integrity. I will have absolutely no problem in saying that I stand by you. She said that we uh, told told me about an experience she had where she went to a government agency uh, for an interview for employment, and she was received with much warmth and welcome. And she didn't experience any discrimination, and that is the complexity of the Caribbean, even now with all of its legal issues. Where in some spaces you have at the beginning the Bon Bati man that we played at the beginning, which Ryan heard on the road, and then at the other end you have where a trans person turns up for an interview in a government agency and um, experiences some kind of acceptance so what how do we deal with this and how do we push the culture to be more to, to be more understanding that um, discrimination is not a part of our culture that we need to change that and how do we ensure that, that the resources invested in litigation do not divest from the other kinds of resources which are needed to push for the cultural change and to promote the kinds of um, shifts in behavior which we're seeing from others. Who knows, do we want the West Indies cricket team to make their statements against homophobia or do we want the courts to do it? Thanks very much.